three years after the start of the pandemic, some 16 million Americans have long COVID, meaning their symptoms continue well after the initial infection. An estimated 4 million people say long COVID has significantly reduced their ability to carry out day-to-day -day activities. For many of them, that includes their jobs. Economics correspondent Paul Salman has our story, which was produced by Diane Lincoln Estes. COVID just makes things harder. Six-year-old Carliana Hurst remembers her mom before long COVID. She, um, well, went on some walks with me. And she can't do that now? Um, no. Is it sad? Yeah. Carliana's 22-year-old brother Dan says their mom is mostly out of action these days. Afterward, she tends to be bedridden a lot more. How much? Uh, at least a good bit of day every day. My activity is sitting here talking to you. That's a lot for me. Single mom Meredith Hurst was a paralegal in Wilmington, Delaware. How was school today? Good. She hasn't been able to work in three years. Doing this interview, a struggle. I have to prepare in advance by resting days in advance and then getting ready today. I had to take breaks between because I get shortness of breath while getting dressed. I um, also get extremely exhausted getting dressed. Now I cover economics, not medicine, but long COVID, it turns out, may be a major factor in one of the most bedeviling trends in the economy these days, the lack of workers. People who get long COVID are more likely to be subsequently unemployed. So says Northeastern University's David Laser. It's a significant effect. They are 16% less likely to be employed. We do have a big long COVID problem. There are many others who, like Meredith Hurst, are no longer working, says researcher Katie Bach. I would bet somewhere around 500,000. Um, that would not include people who have reduced their hours. So I'm talking about just people who are out of the workforce due to long COVID. And the afflicted don't appear to be coming back anytime soon due to a slew of symptoms. I will get pain down my arm, elbows, hands, shortness of breath, tachycardia, extreme exhaustion. The pain in my foot is awful. Philip Bezeski was a social worker for the state of Massachusetts. I have been an adoption social worker. I've done social work for 25 years. But COVID put him in the hospital back in March of 2020, and he's never been the same. My stamina, my ability to go up, up and down the stairs is a struggle. I've had to use a cane um, for years now. Another symptom actually recurred during our interview, brain fog. I, I, I can't tell you how long we've been talking right now, but this is where it, it gets harder to focus. I feel every nerve in my body now that I didn't used to feel before I had COVID and long COVID. Shamir Smith was a teacher in Baltimore before she got sick. My body is broken. On some days, I feel like a cracker that somebody can put in their hands and just crumble because that's how my body feels. Smith first discussed her condition on the news hour two years ago. It felt like a ghost or a monster had started to inhabit my body. And today? Now my memory has gotten progressively worse. Interacting with you, mm -hmm. you seem as sharp as anybody I ever talked to. Long COVID is a very sneaky, uh, invisible condition that people don't recognize unless there are uh, visible symptoms. Mm -hmm. And so today I feel okay, but when you leave here and when this conversation ends, I'll be on my couch for the next five to six hours because this conversation itself is exhausting. Post-exertional malaise. Meredith Hurst had it for a week after our interview as her son documented. Philip Bozeski is heartbroken he can no longer do the adoption work he loved. When you can match a child who really needs a family to a family, it feels wonderful to be able to say, all right, now you're gonna move on as a family. Bozeski asked for accommodations to return part-time. They said, I either come back full time, work at full capacity of what I was doing before, or tender my resignation. And that's what you had to do? That's what I ultimately had to do. When I tried to go back to work, 
I got physically sick. Hearst tried to return to work twice. The sore throat, the lymph nodes, the exhaustion, the fever, um, achiness, and that's what happens when I overexert myself. I loved my job. So then, mm. okay. I'll pat myself on the back to say um, I was an extraordinary teacher. Shamir Smith's realization she could no longer teach really hurts. You know, as a black girl growing up in Southeast DC, in the hood, in a poor community, people would tell me, cause I was like the nerdy girl, you should teach, you should teach. When I became a teacher, it was like the puzzle pieces of my life just started to fit together. That was my true calling. But not anymore. And the financial toll is immense. 80% of my income is government assistant based. So I receive social security. I am on um, section eight. Housing. Yes, and I receive food stamps from the government. Simply applying for benefits has been hard for Hearst. I did try to apply for social security disability on my own and due to my disability, I was unable to complete the application. How do you survive? Sadly, I'm maxing out my credit cards. I've drained my 401k at this point. I am going to be applying again for Social Security disability in hopes of having some income and um, assistance from family. And long COVID is taking its toll on the economy as well. Total estimate in the hundreds of billions, says Bach. It includes lost wages for people who are not working. It includes increased health care costs. And then there's lost quality of life, which is a concept in health economics where there is a cost to people suffering. Suffering Philip Bezeski knows only too well. I've gone through times of I haven't left my room for days, depression, um, thoughts of suicide, rage. Shamir Smith has been there. I wasn't teaching. I couldn't stand up. I could hardly move my body. I was nauseous all the time. I couldn't poop. I could hardly pee. Um, I wanted to die. This. this tree grows in the country. Finally, there's the cost to others, like the kids of Meredith Hurst. Hurst mourns the mother she once was. We would go to the mountains and take vacations and things like that. And I'm not able to do that anymore. They're memories now. They're memories of a life I used to live that I'm not able to anymore. Memories her daughter shares. We also used to do a bunch of picnics. No more? Nah. -uh. Painful even for the reporter. This apple tree. And perhaps you too. For the PBS NewsHour, Paul Salmon.